So for today, we are reviewing yesterday where we did permutations and combinations. That the P, the order matters, and the C, the order doesn't matter. And if I did 2C1, you do it on the calculator. It's under math, the math key. And then you arrow over to probability, which unfortunately some are abbreviated PRB and some are PROB. But either way, you go to probability. And then you choose this, which is NCR. All right, so that answer came out to 2. This one was 8P3. It looks like this when you put it in your calculator, and that answer came out to 336. That was like eight kids racing around the house, and there's 336 different ways they could finish first, second, and third. Okay, let's do a tree. Everybody draw this. That's point eight, and this is yes, and this is no. You ask the person, hey, can I cut your lawn for free? A lot of people would say yes to that. Like, whoa, dang, thanks for being willing to cut my lawn. 80% chance they'd say yes. But I didn't put the no probability because you're supposed to be able to figure that out. Then if you, they do say yes to that and you, and you actually cut their lawn and then they're like, yay, thank you for doing that. Um, then you ask them, hey, would you be willing to donate to this cause that I am supporting? Like, I'm doing this because I'm trying to raise money for, you know, feed the children. So this is the donate question. And if you ask them after you just mowed their lawn for free because you're trying to be nice, I bet you they'd probably donate something. They'd be like, well, you were just nice to me, so I'll be nice back to you. And so let's say that there's a 70% chance that they would donate then. There's still a 20% chance. No, not a 20%. You should figure that out. There's still a chance that they won't donate. Now, if they said no to you, like, mm, this is too weird. I'm not letting you mow my lawn. Maybe it's not because they don't trust you. Maybe it's like because they just had it mowed recently. Or maybe they're literally, they just paid some guy, he's going to mow it tomorrow, and they're like, well, I don't want to have you do it if I paid some guy to mow it. So, so maybe they're not bad people, but maybe there's less chance that they're going to say yes on the donate question. That's my theory anyways. You should be able to fill in this and this and this and then tell me the probability that this one happened. You walked up to the house. They said, no, nah, don't mow my lawn. But sure, I'll donate to your cause. That's a treat. David B., tell me what the highlighted pink area is right here. You know that probability? Point 0.2, because it has to add up to 100%. Very good. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. Aben, what was the other one up here? It's very similar. Uh, point three. Correct. And last but not least, Nora, this one down here. Point five. Point five. And then if we're going to fill in this last thing, which is, where did, what does this one equal right here? Amir, what did you get for that one? Uh, for all of them. No, no, just one right here. Uh, it's 0 0.10, which is technically, there it is, 10% chance. There was a 10% chance that they would say, no, I'm not going to have you mow my lawn for free, but yes, I'll donate. All right, just to make sure you got how we got that, would you please figure out the probability of this one up here at the top, this route? Use your calculator. Zach, what'd you get? I thought I saw you finish, but apparently not. I'll come back to you on a different question. Vivian, what did you get? Okay, you guys, all you gotta do is type in point eight. And then time. <coughs> Cooper, what'd you get? Oh, point five, six. All right. I'd like you to just 
tell me what that means in a word. Like, 56%. There you go. 56% chance that that would happen. All right. So that's how you make a tree. All right. Now I got to give you a, a couple other skills to be able to handle our next uh, type of probabilities. The first one is a probability where, would you agree there's probably some kid out here who is a decent free throw shooter, a 90% free throw shooter? Can you imagine that? In this room, there's some kid who's pretty good at free throws. Okay. So let's say there's this kid. He makes 90% 90, 90 of his free throws. But he takes five shots at the end of the game. Five shots, and we want to see what's the probability he will make four shots. Do you get, if he's a pretty good free throw shooter, he'll probably make four out of five. He might make five out of five even. There's pressure, though, so maybe his percentage will be a little worse because of real world pressure, but... If he's a 90% free throw shooter and he's got five shots, we want to figure out the probability he makes four of them. You're going to put this in the calculator this way. Listen before you type it because you need to know where to find it. You're saying, I'm going to take five shots. I got a 90% chance of making them. And I want to know the probability I'll get four out of the five. That's how you put it in, those three numbers. Five shots, 90% chance of making it. I want to make four. Would you agree that this kid, if he really is really good at free throws, he probably has a good chance of making four out of five shots? Should be a fairly decent sized number. All right. So then this is called binomial, binome PDF. And you're going to have to find it. I'll show you. It's on the calculator somewhere, but it's somewhere, honestly, I bet you you could try for 15 minutes before you finally found it. It is stinking impossible to find. Okay. But it's under distributions. Do you see the blue second key? On your calculator, there's a blue key that says second, 2ND. Go second, D distur, D I S T R. I'm in the classroom, I'm holding up where it is. It's right underneath those little arrow keys. See where I'm pointing? A little, right above the little arrow keys, there's this disturb. Okay. The second key and disturb. That's for distributions. Now, the first thing you should see is distributions, and that's where we are. We are not doing a normal PDF. I know that has the word PDF in it, but we are not doing a normal PDF. We arrow down a whole bunch of times, in like seriously, like 9, 10, 11, 12 times, something like that, and you find binome PDF. It's a, pi a binomial probability distribution frequency. But you don't have to memorize all that. And now your calculator says by gnome PDF. And then it has a parenthesis. That's a hint whenever it has a parenthesis that you'll type in a number and then you'll end up closing the parentheses. But I told you to type five. Comma, if you've never seen the comma key before, which is actually possible for some of you, you may have never used a comma. It's above the seven key. You all know where the seven key is. Right above the seven key, is a comma. Five comma point nine, and you don't have to say zero. You can. It doesn't hurt, but you could just say point nine, comma four, and the parentheses. I'm gonna walk past in a minute. If you're having trouble with it, just ask the kid next to you first so that they can explain it to you. There's only one of me. I want to see it, who was able to find it. Pausing for a second. Okay, just realize that on some of the newer calculators, once you type binome PDF, you have to tell it these three things, but they ask it to you in questions. Would you read me those three questions they ask? Trials. 
trials. That this is trials. Five trials. P. P is probability. That's this. And this is the x value. So if you've got one of the newer calculators, you got to tell it the trials is five, the probability is ninety, and the x value is four. Would you please try that and let me make sure it works. Get it up on the calculator screen. Perfect row. Both sides. Dash, you're not going to mess up my row, are you? No, he's got it. Let me just check. Let me check. Let me check. No. Okay, just jerk. Let me check. 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 So was it 32.8% do I remember that right? I saw the 32 on everybody. So we got a final answer on that one, a point three two eight. Now I'm just gonna give you the problem in words and you just did it, I bet you could do it again. So now we're at, I don't know, let's say a uh, football game. And this guy is gonna kick a field goal, okay? He's normally a, for extra points, let's say that he has done eight out of his last 10 kicks he's made. Eight out of 10, okay? Normally, eight out of 10. You should be able to make that probability in your head, right? Okay, if he's normally an eight out of 10 kicker, he gets two kicks at the end of a game because they score twice and he's got to make the extra points. He needs to make both of them. Well, we want to say he gets two attempts and we want him to make two. Now, he actually is not likely to do that because he only makes 80% of the time. So he's got to make two. So it's not very likely that he is going to make two out of two. Remember this is, in case you forgot, it's the binome PDF. And the first thing you put in is how many attempts you're going to have. Then you put the probability. Then you say you want to make two. Okay. Let's see what the answer is. Did you get it already? Oh, that's actually, that's not terrible. I think that's right. Anybody else verify 64%? Cool. And I hear you. You might feel like, well, that's not realistic. This can't factor in things like it's the end of the game. There's all the pressure. Maybe it would be worse than that. But mathematically, that sounds about right. 
Would you agree there's also a chance that he's going to make one out of two? Would you please go back and do the same exact problem, except do it for him only making one out of the two? Find the probability of that. That's a binomial PDF. He has two attempts. Christian, can you tell me what to put in? 0.8 or 80, either way works. Yep. And then one, correct, do it. I'm gonna see if I can beat you to it. It's distribution, arrow down a bunch of times. Binom PDF, got it already? Two, comma, 0.8, comma, one, and the parentheses, and I got 0 0.32. Do you guys have 32 on that one? Cool. Now, do you get it's more likely that he would make two out of two because he's an 80% kicker? So it's he usually makes them. But if you put these together, you could say that there's a 96% chance, I added them together, 96% chance that he would make at least one. You know what I mean? Like, if they only need really need him to make one of the two, no, I, I would never give you a problem that's that hard. But this is the probability he makes two. This is the probability he makes one. If you put them together, then you got the probability of one or two. And remember, or means add. I mentioned that one a few times. Okay. I have one last kind of question to teach you today, and that goes like this. Out of this room right now, uh, I'm going to divide you into two groups of people. People that have black hair and people that don't. Okay? And I'm, obviously that can be a judgment call. You could, for some kids, you might look at them and go, that's actually brown. I'm not going to count that as black. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a number, so don't take any offense at this. I'm going to say that there's four kids in here who have dark enough hair to be considered black hair, right? And everybody else has got some shade of brown. We got red, we got blonde, we got all different kinds of colors. We got some people that have colored their hair. Okay, so let's say it's four and it's everybody else is, let's say it's about 20. Now, if I pick from those two groups and I say, I want two out of each group, then see if you can get what I'm doing here. This is a combination where I had four people and I'm gonna pick out two of them. And here I have a combination where I had 20 kids and I'm gonna pick out two of them. And that's a number of people. I times that together because you always multiply your choices. And I'll get all the different combos that I could have, where I have two out of these four people and two out of these 20 people to represent the group. That times that. All right, I'm trying to do this quickly because we have this test coming up on Friday. I would love to have more time to explain this to you in depth, but I'm just trying to get uh, through this as fast as I can. Now, do you get, we already practiced these earlier this hour. We practiced this problem right here and we practiced this problem right here. Now all I gotta do is times them together. So figure out this answer, figure out this answer, times them together. That'll be how many different sets of two from here and two from here. Now this same problem could be used for pizzas. If you have like a whole bunch of different kinds of crust. And I want to pick two. And the pizza, though, can you pick a tail of two crusts at the same time? And eh, not really. You could have a whole bunch of different kinds of vegetables you could put on the pizza. Like people like to put peppers on there. Or people like to put olives on there or whatever. So this could be about like, oh, there's four different kinds of vegetables you can put on the pizza. 
and there's 20 different kinds of cheese you could put on the pizza. Maybe that's their specialty is they have tons of cheese. All right, so everybody please figure out 4P2, sorry, C, and 20C2, and the order must not matter, otherwise we'd be using P. Do you get it as a pizza place, the order you put things on probably doesn't matter too much. If you're gonna put on pepperoni and sausage, do you think it, anybody ever brings the pizza back and says, you put the pepperoni on first. I wanted the sausage on first. No, that'd be crazy. Now I get, there is actually an order in that you wanna put the sauce on before you put the cheese on, but you probably could even reverse it and it'd probably still taste okay. All right, so anyway, we're saying that the order does not matter. So please find 4C2 and 20C2 and times them together. I'm gonna pause. In case you forgot where those under, it's under math and probability. Did you get this first one was six? Raise your hand if you had six for the four C2. Okay, good. Zach, can you tell me what the 20 C2 was? Go type it in quick. Aben, have you typed in the 20 C2? Yeah. What'd you get? 190. Can anybody verify 190? Awesome, thank you. And then I'm going to take the 190 and times it by 6. 190, 190. My calculator just died. Great. I use my phone backup. What is 190 times 6? 1140. Who had that one right? Cool. All right. So. Let me now uh, take one last problem in the real world that you have to understand whether it's a P or a C and show you how to do it. It has to do with books on a shelf. Yes. Just, just wait for this one question just real quick and then just like literally 30 seconds from now, you don't have to ask, go, okay? So instead of books on a shelf, do you get that right this second? I have a whole bunch of uh, phones up here because people are borrowing for calculators. So I got one, two, three, four phones up. Nope, oh, five. Five phones up here. Probably even more, but I'm going to use those five. Is this mine? Yeah, that's mine. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. I got five phones. Do you get I could have them in any order I want? Let's say I care about the order and like moving them around, like putting this at the end, makes it a different order. Then how many different ways are there to put the five phones up here? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's either a C or a P and the order matters. So, what do you think it is? It's got to be a P. Then the question is, there's five phones. You always put the starting number here. That's pretty easy. And am I picking out only a couple of them? No, I'm putting them all on the, on the shelf, or on the, in this case, on the table. 5P5, use your calculator to do it. Put in the five first. Remember, this is under math, probability. And my calculator is starting its reboot process. It's going to take a while. Amir, have you got the 5P5 figured out? All right. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Rena. Have you got the 5P5 figured out yet? 120. Can anybody verify the 120? Okay, cool. All right. That's kind of crazy. There's 120 ways I could put these phones up here. But if I just switch this phone and this phone, they're different. Now it's a different way. There's 120 different ways you could do it. That's a lot. Another way, way to say that is with blanks. There's five spots for a phone. There's five choices for this one, four choices for that one, three choices for that one, two choices for that one, and then there's only one phone left. Guess what you get when you go five times four times three times two times one? Five times four is 20, times three is 60, times two is 120. That's how that's working. Have you ever figured that out yet? That's what those probability, that, that's how those permutations are working. There's five spots and you multiply your choices. There was five choices for what phone to put first. Times four choices, three, two, one, and it equals 120. All right, so imagine it's the test, and I say, 
This lady collect, collects, I know somebody who collects shot glasses. Every time she goes someplace, I don't know if you know this, but this is a thing, for, for like stores that offer, uh, you know, like memorabilia from a place for tourists, a lot of times they'll have a shot glass for their city. Like, or if, if it's Glacier National Park, somebody makes a shot glass that says Glacier National Park on it. So lady collects shot glasses. She's got 10 now. So she can put them out in any order she wants. How many different orders can they be in? So if you're talking about the shot glasses on the shelf, how many different orders are there? Well, there's 10 different things, and it does the order matter? Yes, that's the whole point. If you did 10C10, by the way, the answer would just be one. And you'd be like, wait a minute, there isn't only one answer. So it must be 10P10. The way you could think of it is, there's 10 spots. Oh, but if, there, if the order didn't matter, then there'd only be one way to put them out. And then that's kind of a dumb question. We aren't going to do just one. You know what I mean? The question's got to be more complicated than that. So you put out these shot glasses. She could put them out in any order she likes. There'd be a lot of different ways to do it. 10. P. Math. Probability. P. 10. And I got, holy cow, Three six two eight eight zero zero. Putting in the comma, that is over three million ways that you can arrange those. And I know that seems like crazy things, but did you guys get the same thing? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you see in the back of the classroom that there are four pictures on the wall? One, two, three, four. Do you get the? I didn't really care what order I put them up in. So I could reshuffle them, and that'd be a different order. And I could reshuffle them again. Would you please figure out for me how many different ways those pictures can be on a wall? Use your calculator. There's four of them back there. How many different ways could I do it? Does the order matter? The whole point is that the order matters. If you tried 4C4, it would be one, and then you'd be like, there's not only one way to put them up there. Obviously, the order must matter. Four P four, and I got twenty four. Who got also got twenty four? Okay, good. Yes. So there, I covered everything that you need to know so far. I only think there's really just one thing left about probability. I'll cover that tomorrow, and then we have a review day on Thursday, and then this is Friday. Okay. It's a lot of calculator stuff. Please, if you get stuck on the calculator, I'd be happy to help you uh, to get going. Like, if you're like, oh, I don't remember how to find this one, you just got to ask. So I'm going to pause for a second, and we'll do the first couple questions of the worksheet together.